Hi everyone, it's Connor here from Durham Hearing Specialists. I hope you're doing well and welcome to another video. We've had a number of questions asked about uh, fluid building behind the eardrum. So fluid build like building up in the middle ear cavity, otherwise known as the tympanic cavity or the tympanum or middle ear cleft. And um, I thought it would be very interesting to do a video on it because it is a very interesting condition. Now to understand why fluid builds up, we need to understand a little bit about the anatomy and the middle ear structure and how it connects to the back of the nasal cavity. So let's go into some drawings and, uh, and explain it. So here, uh, what we've got is a, a diagram that I drew earlier in another video. So if you're interested in finding out a little bit more about the general anatomy of the ear, then I'll link that down in the description below. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna focus today on this portion here which is the middle ear. So this is a, a basically an air-filled space inside your skull, inside the temporal bone of your skull. Um, so let's go down and we're gonna draw that in detail. Now what's really important to understand about this particular condition, this, this fluid buildup, which is otherwise known as middle ear effusion, or some people call it a titus media with effusion, some people call it serous otitis media, um, other people call it glue ear. They all roughly refer to the same thing, basically. Um, and it's, it really is just a, a buildup of fluid in this cavity. So I've drawn the ear canal here, and we'll draw the middle ear space. Now this middle ear space is not just bare bone. So it is in fact lined with a special type of lining called the mucosa lining. Okay, and mucosa linings are very common. So I'll just draw the eardrum here. I'll draw it in blue. Mucosa linings are very common. You have them in other parts of your body. So for example, down, you know, nasal cavity, down your trachea, your, your windpipe, um, in your digestive tract and so on and so forth. And mucosa linings are there, and they offer some protection actually. So if you imagine if you were in a really dusty environment and you breathed in lots of dust, that dust, the majority of it probably would not reach your lungs because they get caught in the mucus that's produced by your mucosa lining, right, those dust particles. So um, it's there to protect. And um, the middle ear has this special mucosa lining, which I'll draw in green. So it's essentially a continuation of the respiratory mucosa that you would find down your trachea and in your, in your nose. Um, we'll also draw, just for completion, we'll draw the middle ear bones here. And again, I talk about the, these structures more in the general anatomy video, which I'll link down below. So there's your malleus, otherwise known as the hammer bone, the incus, and the stapes. Smallest bone in the human body, the stapes. Lovely, okay. So I mean, for all intents and purposes, these middle ear bones are, are irrelevant to the, this particular conversation, but I'm just drawing them in because it's, it's nice to have that completeness. So there we go, we have an ear canal, we have a blue eardrum, we have the middle ear bones and this cavity here inside the skull, okay? Now this portion here is very important, okay? This is a tube that connects to the back of the nasal cavity, what we call the nasopharynx. And this is basically 99.9% .9 of the time. If you have fluid, if you have middle ear effusion, this is the problem right here. This is your eustachian tube. And I mean, I say 99.9% .9 of the time because in, in very, very rare circumstances, you will have fluid building up there for another reason. So for example, it could be fluid leaking out from the inner ear. Okay, that would be called a perilymph fistula. You could have fluid, you know, you can have blood leaking in from your internal carotid artery or your jugular here, or bleeding from the eardrum, okay? All extremely rare. Um, I mean, you could even have um, fluid from your brain leaking in through the tegment tympani. This is the tegment tympani right here, the roof of the middle ear, all exceedingly rare. And if you had any of those problems, you would, you would almost certainly know about it. There would be other symptoms other than just a blocked ear. But uh, this eustachian tube here is kind of the connection. So it's the, it's the, it allows the middle ear access to the outside world, okay? So unless you have a, if you, unless you have a perforated eardrum, which most people don't, then this is for all intents and purposes enclosed and shut off from the outside world until this eustachian tube opens, okay? And it's supposed to open 
regularly throughout the day. When you chew, when you swallow, when you yawn and so on, it opens and closes. And that's because there are muscles surrounding the eustachian tube. So for example, in this region here, you'll have a couple of muscles in different orientations called the tensor veli palatini and the levator veli palatini. You also have up here a, a, another muscle in a bony canal, that's the, called the tensor tympani muscle. But for all intents and purposes, what you need to know is that there are muscles around this tube which are heavily involved in chewing and swallowing, basically, and that helps the eustachian tube open and close regularly. Now, what would happen if this eustachian tube was clamped closed? Okay, we'll discuss the reasons for that in a minute. But now what you have is this cavity, which is shut off from the outside world. What do you think is gonna happen? Well, the air that's trapped inside here, remember that air is roughly about 20% oxygen and about 78% nitrogen. What's gonna happen is that the air is gonna be used up Okay, the air is going to diffuse into this mucosa lining, okay? So the oxygen and the nitrogen in the air, okay? If you think about how you breathe, okay? You breathe air into your lungs, okay? How does that oxygen get into your blood? I mean, it's not like the, the air is kind of injected into the blood, right? Like a, like a soda stream, like you carbonate drinks, right? It's just that the, the air that's inside your lungs goes down, down, down into your lungs and it goes into these very tiny passages and eventually it makes its way to these very, very tiny things called alveoli, which are like, kind of look like grapes or like balloons. Um, and they're wrapped around those balloons of very, very tiny blood vessels called capillaries. And they're close enough, the air and the, the capillary is close enough such that you will get a diffusion, okay? So the, uh, the oxygen from the air will diffuse into the, the blood vessel and the carbon dioxide from the blood vessel will diffuse into the alveoli and then you can breathe out the carbon dioxide. Not all of it, but a fair amount. So that is basically, if you, if you imagine you put, you have a bath full of water and you drop a, a drop of ink into one side of the bath, when you come back a couple of hours later, it's likelihood that the, the likelihood will be that the ink is kind of diffused across the bath and spread out into the water, okay? And that's just sort of the universe, I suppose. So, I mean, things like to travel from a high concentration to a low concentration. So there's like an evenness. You'll find that throughout the universe if you study biology or chemistry or physics, you know, the universe likes things to be kind of balanced and equal. And that's essentially what's happening here. So uh, in the same way that you breathe in and there's gas exchange in your lungs, there's gas exchange in the middle ear too. So as this oxygen and nitrogen basically is, is used up, what will happen is you will get a negative pressure building in here, okay? PA stands for Pascals, which is a unit of pressure. So the air is being used up, but it's not being replenished. So what that means is that you, you have negative pressure inside the middle ear, that will lead to the eardrum kind of being sucked backwards a little bit like that. That's what we call retraction. It'll kind of look like that. And that will lead to the patient feeling like their ear is muffled. They may feel like they have earwax. They may feel like they have a bit of tinnitus. But if that pressure is, goes unresolved, what will happen is you, the, the, the mucus, the fluid that's held in this mucous membrane will start to come out. It'll start to be drawn out by that negative pressure, right? Because there's a vacuum inside the middle ear. And what you will get is a buildup of this fluid here. And it can't leak out because it can't get down the eustachian tube, okay? So the eustachian tube is not only there just for ventilation to supply, to supply fresh air, but it's also allowing things to drain out of the, the middle ear, but obviously it can't because it's blocked. So this mucus kind of sits here and it'll build and build and build as the pressure goes unresolved, okay? At some point, because this is a nice little kind of pocket of fluid, this might be a good breeding ground for bacteria. And what you might have is that this middle ear effusion or otitis media with effusion may transform into acute otitis media with effusion, where suddenly the bacteria proliferate, bacteria proliferate, bacteria multiply, and then this leads to a general inflammation of this mucosa lining as a response to the bacteria. And then you just have tons more mucus, tons more mucus, tons more mucus filling everything. And the mucus can get very thick as well. Um, so that's acute hepatitis media. So those, that's the kind of the general mechanic. It's to do with pressure, okay? That's the general mechanic of this condition. Now you may be thinking at this point, well, why does the eustachian tube block up? 
and the mutation tube blocks up because, well, it can be due to several reasons. It is thought that probably the most common reason, this is the classic theory of how this condition arises, is that you have inflammation here. So you have inflammation in the nasopharynx, Maybe, due to, maybe you have a cough, maybe you have the sniffles, maybe you have a, had a recent cold, maybe you have hay fever, you have an allergy. There is something which is disturbing the nasopharynx, inflammation, swelling, and then the eustachian tube closes up that way. Um, and that's, you'll, you'll find that, um, you know, around, if somebody has had a cold for a couple of weeks and they're just getting over it, they'll usually present with some kind of negative middle ear pressure. Um, so it, there is also the case that you know, you could have reflux. So a lot of children, usually below the age of seven, what they'll do is they'll, they'll have a lot of reflux. Um, people also with GERD get this. So GERD, you may have heard of it, it's called gastroesophageal reflux disorder, where they just keep refluxing all the time and then they have to take medicine and antacids or, or other types of meds to, um, to control that, like omeprazole. But what will happen is some people will reflux stuff from their stomach into there and research has shown that a lot of children who are prone to a titus media with effusion they will have pepsin from their stomach in the in the fluid um, and what that pepsin will do is probably insult you know add insult to the to the mucosa lining that mucosa lining will be prompted to you know make more mucus in response to that because they don't like the pep doesn't like the pepsin and then eventually you have this buildup, which again can lead to acute otitis media, right? So can you see the relationship between the two? You know, the, a, a type, the effusion that's in there, which is non-infective, provides a breeding ground for bacteria to become infective. So uh, again, you know, pepsin and other, you know, coughing, spluttering and so on, you know, refluxing all sorts of stuff into the middle ear cavity is, is almost certainly, again, another cause. That's, that's kind of the newer theory. So there we go, there is middle ear effusion. In nearly all cases, it's due to a blockage here. You know, this is the, the kind of Suez Canal of, of, the, of the nasopharynx of this portion of the, the head, um, of, the, of the ear system. So it, it may need to do with pressure. And again, if you have a, you know, a mild case of this, it can almost certainly be resolved by nasal spray or something, um, but be sure to see your doctor before you do anything. So there we go. I hope you found this video interesting. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them down in the comment section below and I will try my very best to get back to you. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you on the next video.